to the Public Utilities Fortnightly Podcast. My name is Stephen Anderson. I'm a contributing editor to the Fortnightly, and I'm talking today with Leroy Nosbaum, who is president and CEO of iTron, Inc. iTron, of course, is one of the leading smart meter manufacturers, has been involved in some of the biggest smart grid rollouts to date, and uh, we're talking today about the current state of the smart grid marketplace and the outlook in the immediate future. Uh, Leroy, welcome to the podcast. I know you've been away from the company for a couple of years and have just recently come back. I wonder, has that given you a fresh perspective on the marketplace? Stephen, it's an interesting thing to go away for two years and come back. It's clear that the industry has moved very fast over the last four years. Uh, It's also clear that uh, recently it's begun to slow down a little bit. And partly it slowed because of the stimulus program that was in place brought a lot of projects forward. So now we're having a bit of a lull. Partly the current economic conditions have put regulators in a very cautious mood, I think, as they think about large projects and their effect uh, ultimately on the consumer. You know, as, as I look at smart meter and smart grid projects that have been deployed, there is a growing realization that these early projects, while there was a lot of hype around them and a lot of promise, uh, they probably haven't shown enough for the consumer in uh, near real time. You know, programs to help with energy usage and convert, uh, conservation aren't there yet. Programs to help reduce energy bills, not quite there yet. Real goodness for the citizen has just not shown up. Now certainly those benefits are gonna come. Uh, and so I think the promise was correct, but frankly, uh, they've been slow to develop and I, I think that's a bit of a lesson learned and as I come back, that one's sort of leaping off the, the page at me. You touched on the hype factor, and obviously there's a lot of hype surrounding the smart grid, um, that there are perceptions, both positive and negative. What effect does that have on the marketplace? Well, you know, one of the things that I've really been touched with as I came back is, is the hype and its effect. First of all, you know, a lot of people thought this market would be very large and it would grow very rapidly. Uh, Well, the market is large, and while it grew rapidly for a while, this is a very cautious marketplace. The dynamic is necessarily and appropriately cautious, so I'm not surprised to see, you know, the whole thing slow down a bit. That has disappointed uh, a lot of people in the industry. It certainly disappointed a lot of shareholders uh, for companies like iTron. You know, I do think that the reality in some respects has not lived up to the expectation Uh, in the area of the consumer and the perceived benefit to the consumer. You know, while utilities are beginning to save real operating costs because they've been reduced because of smart metering and smart grid deployments, consumers are yet to see the benefit, uh, either in choices they have or in bill reductions or convenience. Now, that stuff's going to come, but the conversation around those benefits has been incomplete and a bit oversold relative to the timing and when those things would actually start showing up. And so I think as utilities and regulators begin to look at new projects, they've become more cautious and they're asking tougher questions. You know, the result is a desire and a requirement for sound business cases and prudent projects. In the long run, that's a good thing, but it has caused a bit of a slowdown uh, in the industry uh, and uh, you know, my my projection is we'll we'll see a pickup after we get some better economic times, and we get some good results off of the projects that are already out there. It's kind of ironic in a sense because uh, promising the uh, the benefits of uh, the smart grid is really what spurred people to make the first round of investment. But now that you have a little bit of a track record, and, and if those things haven't materialized as fast as maybe they were billed to, it actually has a uh, a slightly chilling effect. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting subject because I, th- I think there's a, there's a great lesson learned there relative to the benefits in the consumer. I mean, I, I think early on you absolutely have to get the consumer involved. And you have to get them involved not by talking to them about the broad benefits that smart grid and smart metering are, are going to accrue to them, and certainly that is true, But I think you have to involve them more as a partner in the discussion, acknowledge their concerns, be very careful to be truthful about 
these benefits show up at this stage in the process as opposed to look at all the wonderful benefits. Mm -hmm. and, and I also think that that is a lesson learned. I think utilities have been too driven to deploy total networks or total systems and then to go back and assess and uh, begin to install the consumer part of the equation. You know, it seems that that, that battle has two fronts as, as well. I mean, if, if things were oversold that you just plug this in and we're all living like the Jetsons, that's one side of it. But the other side is uh, people's health concerns or big brother aspects of it that companies also have to uh, deal with getting the appropriate messages across, don't they? Yeah, Stephen, I, I absolutely think that one of the things that utilities have been both reluctant to deal with and, and too late to talk about our concerns like, does RF cause a health concern? You know, are we going to invade your private space? And I, I think you have to be right up front with that and say these are concerns that have been raised. Uh, here's how we talk about it. Uh, you don't need to worry about this, uh, and this is why. And we haven't quite stonewalled the consumer on this, but we've come pretty close to it. You know, unfortunately, we have a vocal few uh, that are painting uh, this whole area of smart grid and smart meter with lots of dire consequences. Uh, beside the fact that, in general, they're wrong, uh, you can't ignore them, and it's better to address that up front than afterward. You know, you've been involved at ITRON in some of the largest smart meter rollouts to date. I wonder if there's any other practical lessons that you've learned in the process of those things that utilities that aren't as far along in their uh, smart metering initiatives might uh, benefit from. Clearly, it's tougher to get these projects approved in this economic cycle. So I, I would say that one of the things that utilities have to be very careful about here is their business cases have to be extraordinarily sound. The other thing that I'm thinking about a lot lately is that utilities have to think creatively about charges flowing through to consumers. It's very difficult to begin charging today for a benefit that a consumer is going to receive many months or even years into the future. And, and I think, you know, while clearly some of these expenses have to roll ultimately to the consumer, I think utilities have to maybe think a little bit more creatively around that because it's an objection I'm hearing more and more. Lastly, I, I would say to, to my utility colleagues, be careful of the hype. It's easy to promise and hard to deliver, but you know, words that sound good today are going to be hard to eat tomorrow if they don't come true, uh, and I think we all have to be careful about that. You mentioned that you expect the market to kind of flatten out here a little bit in the near uh, future, but then uh, kind of uh, resume growth. W what, what kind of time frame do you anticipate in that? Well, you know, I, I think as I look out at 2012, I think it's a kind of a flattish year in the industry, and, and, and I think at least the front end of 13 is kind of a flattish year in the, in the North American industry as well. I, I think by the end of 13, life is uh, considerably better. Uh, I don't know that that's all bad, by the way. Uh, because I, th I think we get some projects up and running, we get some consumer reaction, we get to see uh, the good, the bad, the real, the unreal, uh, and I, I think that makes us all stronger going forward. Well, Leroy, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, best of luck in the new year. Stephen, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for having us.